What's up, YouTube? Spring update. If you've been uh, following along with me for the last couple of years, you know, I started with food plots and all that fun stuff. I think it's May 8th, May 9th. Beautiful afternoon. We got some rain coming. Um, apples are May 10th. Apples are blossoming very nice right now. We've done a little bit of pruning, not on these ones. These ones are beyond beyond any help, but the deer still love them. They still drop apples. Um, mowed a little bit over there once already. The rest of the orchard's about due. Kids are gonna end up with ticks. Uh, peaches, you know, peaches are, are what they are. They're, uh, they're hurting. They're not easy to maintain. Take a lot of, a lot of care, pesticides and fungicides, and that's a lot of work for me, but uh, where we've cut down a lot of trees, either dead peach trees or plum trees that died from black knot, we're going to start replacing a little bit and converting part of this orchard into just kind of hardwoods slash wildlife habitat. So what I've got here from a local uh, local nursery are some oak trees. I wanted to do just white oaks. He wouldn't sell me enough. <laughs> didn't have a huge stock. It didn't sell me as many as I wanted. So I mixed a couple of reds in. Um, and actually in the long run, I think two reds and two whites uh, might be kind of cool um, in one particular area. And then I've got on order uh, some smaller, uh, I think they're three to five footers to fill in some other spots, but much cheaper. These weren't too bad. I want to say $40 or $30 or so for that size. I think it's a pretty good deal local. I had to drive about an hour to get them though. So spent some gas and then uh, two more pear trees. If you remember last year, we planted two red Bartlett's. Got my Lowe's 10% off coupon today. And so these are $36 a piece, minus 10% plus tax. Um, so not too bad on, uh, they didn't have red Bartlett's, but these are still Bartlett's. They're just pearl Bartlett's, which is a new one for me. So we'll have four pears. I'm not gonna put the oaks in the ground today. Just gonna run out of daylight. Um, and don't have time to do the fencing and stuff, but I'm gonna go set them out. I'm gonna plant the pears because uh, it's supposed to rain over the next couple days. And uh, I'll add one more thing. We've got some swamp white oaks, and I will. Uh, I'll probably make one video. So the next time I do this, heck, it could be a week from now when I get a chance. But um, these three swamp whites, I'm gonna put back in the woods. In a swampier area i came uh, and i'll update this on the video last saturday felled a big ass maple tree that was blocking some light i, I picked an area that was generally kind of open i didn't want to cut down a whole bunch of trees and then i took about four dead ash trees out um they would have fallen eventually but i didn't want them to fall on the plant on the oaks which will take you know years and years and decade plus to to start producing but i thought better now than never so there's a little spring update i'll uh I'll clip on to the end of this when we get some more stuff in the ground. Hope all's well in your world. All right, YouTube. It is uh, May 15th, 14th or 15th. Um, just after I made that, that last video, which will be spliced together with this one, I actually got a notification from UPS that my uh, Whitetail Hill Chestnuts order was on the way. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't know what to expect from packaging. I knew it wasn't getting potted plants. Um, but it was kind of funny just getting uh, trees shipped to your door. So um, to give you an idea, if you do business with these folks, this is what you get. Um, the box isn't fully opened up, but these are bare root trees. Um, I've already rid, rid is not a word. I've already read through this and... Uh, and it gives you just some general instructions for planting. There's nothing um, out of the ordinary here from when you would plant any other tree. But very um, cautious with um, essentially how to handle these, given that they're bare roots, moisture, um, not to let them dry out, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, these just came in at 2.30 in the afternoon. It is uh, 5 o'clock at night. Uh, it is actually one of the only nights that I don't have sports with the kids and with work during the day, I figured, you know what, take advantage of the daylight that I've got, come over here, put these in the ground. If my memory serves me, because I bought these on Black Friday, I should have six persimmons and I want to say like another six or so um, chestnuts. Some late drop persimmons and some late drop, drop chestnuts. 
I did have some oaks originally. I canceled that order um, and I actually got my update from Chief River Nursery that that is supposed to come tomorrow. So it must be that time of year and uh, getting excited. That has some evergreens and stuff that I'm going to use for some property uh, shielding, but also threw some oaks in there because the price was pretty good. Um, and I still haven't put my other oaks in the ground, so I'm hoping um, tomorrow is just not going to work timing-wise, but Thursday I'm going to devote a few hours, if not more, to putting those in the ground. Um, I also ordered the, uh, the tubes, uh, and they come like this. Uh, I'm going to have to figure all that out. Uh, I don't have stakes, which I think I might need for them. I'm um, just reading the instructions, so that might be something I have to come back and do as well. Um, but yeah, I'll get these uh, get these going, take some in-progress videos. But just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like. Um, you know, you buy a bunch of trees <laughs> online, uh, which I've never done before. So uh, let's get going. So I'm back at the uh, planning site. Um, do want to give these guys props, the way everything is bundled. Because I would have no idea what's what. Uh, especially considering the, the late drop hybrid chestnuts or the regular hybrid and the late drop in the American regular persimmons. Now I'm right on the edge of persimmons, so this is kind of a, you know, gamble here that this is gonna work, um, but with warmer winters and stuff that we've had, um, and for how um, positive people speak about persimmons and deer, I'm, I'm excited just to give those a try. If it doesn't work, hey, I tried it right. Um, my dad says um, he has a native one, uh, and he's even closer to the lake, a little further north than where I am, and. If it's been growing up here natively for however long, that gives me some some hope as well. But um, everything was wrapped up here nice, pretty well. I did also order the, who pronouncing that right, mycorrhiza. Um, I thought I got enough for each one, but it recommends a tablespoon per plant. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, that doesn't look like 12 tablespoons, um, but we'll see. Uh, it says five doses, which makes me think I might've gotten shorted there. So maybe I'll just do a little bit of that, uh, mix it in. Um, so anyhow, for the persimmons, I'm gonna plant this kind of like an orchard. Um, I know there's some interesting school of thought um, to, uh, you know, making things look natural, zigzag, plant them randomly. I'm gonna plant um, three in a row, um, about, uh, I'd say about 20 to 25 feet apart. So we'll have two rows of three right here. And you can kind of see where that juts out behind that is some more field and a, and a willow tree. So I think it'll it'll fill up nice, this little area over here. And then many years from now, give me a little less maybe section to mow. This is my clover plot here. Um, and uh, what we want to do, this will be my son's first year hunting, uh, but just in general, I want to put a tripod right around here or so, uh, feral dog with me. And um, with this, it's a real nice rub, or I'm sorry, scrape right there. Um, if I zoom in quickly here, I'll show you where I'm gonna plant one of my oaks. That's just sitting there on a pot right now. Um, and Actually, funny, jumped a deer. I'm not sure if he was nibbling it. I haven't put cages on them yet because I'm mostly ner worried about rubbing, but they'll eat them too. So, um, again, timing. And this is something I don't really like to rush. I like to have fun planning, uh, putting stuff in the ground uh, back there. Um, if you remember from last video, I've already put a couple new pear trees in. Mosquitoes are bad too, which sucks. But uh, just a quick update. It seems kind of boring now that we're on the trees, but right, um, if you follow along, this will be my third year of my clover plot, second year overseeding. Clover looks great, haven't mowed, haven't sprayed anything. Um, really happy with how green this is now. It's been a it's been a wet spring. Here's the willow I was referring to. So you can kind of see the other side of that. So I'll have a little stand of six persimmons there that will be in range of maybe a little uh, tripod tower blind for bow. And of course, totally in range for, for gun. And then uh, this will be my stand of four pear trees. And uh, obviously not a bow shot from there, uh, but for gun, um, it'll be a nice opportunity to have pears 
although they don't really attract too much late in the year, um, and also have, um, oh, <laughs> pause for a second because I didn't see my other pear tree there, and I was like, uh-oh. Um, oh, yeah, so these are getting nibbled on, see? I waited, didn't put any cages in yet. that sons of bitches although they don't look like they've been chewed on now that one does so i put these in the ground just thinking you know let's get them in the ground i'll do cages later obviously the other ones are caged they're a year older they're doing well um i did put the little bark guards on there again wasn't not worried about rubbing this early in the year. But I don't want the deer to, to kill them by eating. And I would think, man, so much food around here. Of course, why not chew on my trees, right? This one looks okay. Maybe I'm just misremembering. I'll have to go back in the video to see if that was fully leafed out in that area. Um, but I got to come back and... Uh, Put some cages on these so we'll have four pear trees in this little section i'll have some persimmons and some chestnuts that i'm going to plant over there i'm really really happy these are growing well no issues here great color starting to grow put on some inches no fruit didn't expect or uh necessarily think i'd be getting fruit in year two obviously but um in another year or two especially with how much sun they get um, should be good. Now this is interesting as well. Um, this looks like it's been nibbled. Um, and these are pretty, pretty decent sized fence. I mean, it'll cost you some money um, just in fencing alone to do this. So, um, and I pulled that back the other day too, so it's possible that got nibbled on before. Um, but my hope, if you look up there ever so carefully, you'll see a nice tree stand that's at twenty yards i believe this next fence one's at 35 which is my second pin so if you paid attention to the last videos i planted them thinking there's nothing nicer especially in an open field than not having to worry about distance and 20 and 35 are very different pins could be the difference between a heart shot a high back shot um you know or right in the boiler maker uh, or <laughs> right underneath or right over the back. So having those natural distance markers uh, and as those trees grow, knowing any deer in those fields that are in there either eating clover or eating, uh, eating my pears, um, knowing where they're at is, uh, is going to be really helpful. And just one less thing to worry about when it comes time to pull back and let that arrow fling. So... I'm wasting daylight. It is drizzling just a little bit, which I think is actually perfect. Uh, hope we get a little bit of rain tonight as I put these in the ground. Again, you can tell. It's heard something. You can tell uh, just looking at the ground here that we've had plenty of rain so far this spring. Pretty good downpour the other night. Baseball games getting canceled and stuff, so. Uh, Anyhow, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the tubes either. I'm not worried about these plants getting destroyed over in two days. Uh, but I read the directions again. Not only do I not have stakes, I don't have zip ties. So that's not going to happen. That's what you get for kind of rushing. Uh, I had some stuff going on between now and planting, so I wasn't able to really look over everything. But I'm not going to waste some more time. I'm going to get the, these in the ground, and I'll give you another update. Okay, a little status update. It's about 6.30. I don't think this is taking me long at all, and I am taking my time if i had a lot of these and had like a system going i think i'd be doing pretty good um obvious um things uh basically it's been a long day um holes are super easy to dig you don't have to go very deep you don't have to go very wide um a lot easier than you know five six foot oak trees or fruit trees as far as just digging that hole not that that's a lot of work but i mean if you had a team you could go through and you could plant a lot of these quick i'm bummed about the grow tubes not paying attention to that instruction i'd like to just get them in um, i'm doing these about seven yards 
to eight yards apart, so 20, 25 feet. Um, that was the other thing. I had notes written down on spacing, um, and I also even plotted these out on Onyx um, just to make sure I got it right. So I used my Onyx lines, which is what I think is the right thing, and I, I know persimmons aren't huge, so I'm not too worried about it. But I did the, uh, the late drops in the back. Again, assuming I'm going to have a, a tripod here. Um, late drops in the back, that's further away. That would be gun time. The early ones up front here. Um, I mean, these just look like sticks in the ground. If someone came back here and mowed, I'd be out some time and money. Uh, so that's the other reason, not that anybody's going to come back here and mow other than me, but just to get uh, the grow tubes in. Uh, I also found a bonus late drop. I don't believe I ordered seven. I'm pretty sure I ordered six, but I had four in that packet. Um, so I planted seven instead of six. I will say one of my regular American persimmons didn't look that great as far as height. Like the top was tipped off. So that was a different package. I think it's going to be just fine. I planted it anyhow. Um, definitely short on the root stuff. So doing probably about a half a tablespoon for that. Uh, also, not great to have a lab with you because they look like sticks. I mean, essentially they are. And he has tried to grab a couple of them. <laughs> Thankfully he hasn't chomped any in half. So persimmons are done. Uh, I'm going to move on to the chestnuts, which I have one, two, three, four, six to do. So that should be pretty quick. The spacing on these ones is going to be a little more interesting as I got less of a farm layout for them. Plan to put it over in that area. Um, you can see maybe where that cell cam is over there. Uh, that is an ash. It's dead. There's an ash behind it that's dead. That ash is dead. And then right middle frame there was an ash that I cut down that's dead so kind of want to start repopulating around these um, that ash isn't dead dead but it will be soon I'm leaving it there though because I know deer don't love open fields if they don't have to so normally I would have cut that down because I don't want it to fall on anything that's growing and I don't want to cut it down and have it fall on something that's growing but um, there's a popular scrape right there and it's just again as deer come out in this field to eat and I shot a doe 20 yards right in front of that uh, cell cam there um, from a ground blind up on top in the peaches um, they like to feel a little bit more secure so if you have open fields you'll notice not always it's not a guarantee nothing in deer hunting is guaranteed but if you have those markers those places those clusters of shrubs or trees you know they do like to to go there it makes them feel a little bit more secure so it's just a little logic on why i didn't cut that down but we're going to plant the chestnuts over there and again and Five years or so. Hopefully they're bustling and uh, we'll be good to go. So we're down to two. Two late drop hybrid chestnuts left. Um, this went just as smooth as the persimmons. Um, I'm nervous on this part of the farm. I hit rock. Not very deep. Had the same issue with the pears. I thought maybe just one big rock, but I don't know. I don't get very deep before I hit, um, before I hit rock over here. But you can see there's plenty of big trees and stuff growing, so whatever. Um, a little further spacing. Did about 10 or 11 yards for these. Um, the root stocks on these, or the root balls, were, were nicer, um, wider, longer. So I had to dig a little deeper. Um, trees are a little thicker, longer <laughs> than the persimmons, but... Um, you know, I don't worry too much about that different tree uh, entirely. So I did two late drops that I just walked by, and then I did two regular hybrid. These are the Dunstan Chinese clones that you read so much about, that these guys where I bought them from are famous for. I bought their taller versions for uh, 30, 40 bucks from Walmart. Um, these Black Friday sale I want to say, I don't know. I don't want to say it on video. Uh, when I make, I'll go back, do some research, uh, let you know what I paid for them. But um, obviously a lot cheaper, a lot smaller of a tree. So um, I've heard folks say that they have better success starting from rootstock than they do transplants and potted plants, trees. So again, these were not the $35, $40 you can get at Walmart from the same company, uh, but much smaller. So we'll, uh, We'll get these next two in the ground. 
Got some five gallon buckets of water to get these started, but really happy it's raining right now. Uh, and just a shout out again to the Can Am, um, which is why I started this whole series. So happy that guys steered me this direction instead of four wheeler. Just makes these projects so much easier. You got this whole bed. Not that you can't do it in a four wheeler, not that you can't tra you know drag a trailer or put a box in the back, but just for you know ease of use. I mean, let's be honest too, where I'm at, I could easily just uh, drive my truck back here. Uh, but when we plant our three swamp white oaks coming up, you'll see uh, you'll see how this baby really earns her keep. All right, rapid fire, keep coming at you. Last two are done. Um, this is a row of plums. I've tried to trim off the black knot in between apples. But some have just died. So I've got a little gap here. Put these about 30 feet apart. You can see maybe that white bag definitely ran out of my root drug. I'll have to double check. I thought I added per, uh, they only charged me I think $1.50 or whatever per plant, but I thought I added enough to there. I think maybe they just missed a bag, but I'll double check. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, so let's see where I mowed on Sunday and Saturday. This food plot's already actually already been mowed, um, and it needs it again. Um, and these are my chestnuts from last year. Like you can see, much bigger when I put them in. They didn't grow at all last year. I didn't get them in till late either. Just started to uh, pop their leaves, so that's good. I've sprayed for uh, took some Roundup, sprayed the stuff growing around it in some areas. Obviously, got a little bit of work to do. And this one where I didn't get as close to the mower. Um, but what looks like a healthy plant to me. So, um, yeah. These were the late drop hybrids. I think if uh, you watched earlier videos, these have all just bolted. Isn't that crazy? Um, you'll know that I rarely hunted this fall plot. There's a sand up there, nice and camouflaged now. Just didn't, uh, didn't have the action out here. Um, just most of my buck activity was in the hardwoods down that path down there. It's going to be a pleasure getting to that to plant these swamp whites. These have been uh, sitting in these bags for a while now and I really want to get them in. I know they're fine. They are healthy looking and uh, deer haven't come back and chewed on these. And uh, But they're bigger, right? You got to dig a hole twice as wide and deep. Not twice as deep, but deep, and uh, fence them in. Uh, and these are going to go back in the woods, which will be my first real tree planting back there. But I got an open area. I don't know if I'm going to make that all into one video because you're going to get bored watching this one, or if I'll splice it. Um, and I'm rambling, and it's uh, about seven o'clock. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Going to dump some water on these bad boys and get out of here and uh, come back with. Uh, proper tools to get these put in their tubes probably spray paint those tubes orange too just so the kids don't run them over you can see uh there's nothing if you didn't know these are planted here that makes them stick out and uh if i get some time hopefully i'll get those oaks in and then i got a whole bunch of more uh, from a different different uh company so we'll see how that goes but i got a bunch of different uh smaller Oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just rootstock uh, twigs, basically, of some oaks. I'm gonna plant those, not for hunting purposes, but up where I've taken out some more pears, just because it's a lot to mow this, and as these peaches kind of die off, I'd like to just kind of return it to some kind of natural, natural order. So, appreciate your patience if you're uh, hanging on with me. Again, I do this mostly for my own self, just diarying this, and I know some people like to see the progress and how we've come along here, and yeah, stay tuned. Hey, and are you really doing it right if you don't enjoy the spoils of your labor? Cheers. <laughs>